We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and we are here to take things back a little bit. Um, There's been a lot of news, a lot of things that have happened since the season ended um, until now, and season has not even started, and it feels like we've been in season for eight months. Um, But we're going to take things back and talk about our top moments of the 2023 season that we expect to see and hope to see coming up in this season of Drive to Survive, which is like nine days away, 10 days away. It's, it's I'm also going to say it's maybe like Emily's wish list of things too that I know I won't see, but I'd really like to see because <laughs> I yeah. want some behind the, behind the scenes, some details, some context. Yes. Exactly. But, oh my gosh. I can't believe we're already at the point where Drive to Survive is coming out, which means that would put us one week away from the season. We're almost there. We've almost we've got to be days away from it. We we've got to be days away from the trailer. You know, I, I was thinking about it this morning. It's it's Sunday. We haven't seen a trailer yet. It's what it, the, the episode comes out the twelfth. The episode or Drive to Survive drops the twenty third. We should be seeing a trailer for Drive to Survive this week. Obviously, if you have you know lived through the entire Formula One season, you know what you know you know very well what could be in the trailer we know very well what could be in the trailer um but um drive to survive is just it's it's always a little fun little behind the scenes tidbits of what we what we get to see and all the the fun coverage that we live through the drama we live the drama. the drama the yeah. races are so much fun and obviously we watch it for that but it's also fun to watch drive to survive and see everything else behind the scenes and you know, the, the personalities come alive, let's say. Exactly. And, and now that Netflix has kind of, um, been told to tone down the manufactured drama. Um, and I think that they have hopefully chosen to take that to heart. Um, this should be, you know, like experienced fans or novice fans watching it and be like, Oh, that's so dumb. Like, hopefully we don't get a lot of that. And we do get a lot of like, you know, background and insights. And, you know, nobody saw Gunther Steiner and Mattia Bonato in a little car driving through, you know, the the hills of Italy um, to, to start off last season. So there, so there's got to be, you know, something that's totally going to come out of left field that we're going to see that's going to, you know, make this, you know, season of Drive to Survive really enjoyable. I mean, say what you want, say what you will. I like the manufactured drama just a little bit, but that's the Bravo holic in me. Um, it it's I mean, obviously it makes it more entertaining. I know it's not all real. I know we've lost some drivers who don't participate in Drive to Survive because it's not mandatory. Max took a break for a long time because he didn't appreciate some of the storylines and the manufactured drama behind it, which I totally understand. I can appreciate and respect. Um some of the you know storylines seem a little far fetched and and out there, um, but it's also entertaining. There's an entertainment factor there, so I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you have I'm to very make excited. It, you have to make it dramatic enough that you're not going to have Lando Norris on social media being like, "That wasn't dramatic at all. That like that didn't happen. Like that's that's where the line goes too far, which is what exactly. happened with with Lando and Daniel. Uh, was that last season or two seasons ago? Two seasons, two seasons ago. I think. Yeah. So, so things like that. Um, but this episode came together. Um, we, when we started the podcast last summer, um, we just kind of had a running, um, Google document of things that happened that we, you know, that we considered highlights and that we, you know, were hoping to see in drive to survive. And we've broken it out into, um, by team. Um, some of the things that, you know, were on the list, we're not necessarily going to talk about, like, obviously the Taylor Swift, Fernando Alonso, um, of it all on social media was funny for a hot minute, but now that she's, you know, dating Travis Kelsey, who's, as we record this about to play in the Super Bowl game of his life, um, not exactly relevant, but we have, this it um it was it was actually fun to kind of look back and see like oh there were a lot of things that happened this season um that could you know really get crammed into drive to survive and also what's going to be left on the cutting room floor is a big question I know I feel like this season 
I mean, every season there's a lot that goes on, but for me, maybe it's because we were doing the podcast. It seemed like more was going on this season, like on track and both and off track as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm very interested to see what, like you said, gets, makes the cut into the episodes, how they structure the episodes, you know, what, what they do, because every episode has a theme. Um, So it'll be interesting. So yeah, like Catherine said, we've kind of structured it by team what might be highlighted, what we'd like to see highlighted. Um, We don't agree on everything, which obviously, you know, knowing us, that's usually the case. Um, But yeah, so we're going to start at the back of the grid and work our way forward. So starting with Haas and ending with Red Bull. And I will make a disclaimer. So just like in the show, Netflix does not um, highlight every team equally and we are also not an equal opportunity (laughs) podcast so we're not going to spend the same amount of time on every single team mostly because not every team deserves it or probably will be highlighted or did anything on or some teams did nothing with that being said teams like Haas just showed up they were they were there there they were there they They fired Gunther That probably won't make the cut because it happened at the end of the season, after the season ended. Um, They were pretty far after the season ended. (laughs) They participated. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a little bit of a like, you know, we're not going to see a lot of Haas, but then we're also going to see a lot of like out of context Haas because, you know, Gunther especially is the star of Drive to Survive. So we're going to see a lot of Gunther giving his opinions on other things that are happening on the grid. But Haas itself, the only highlight they have is that Nico Hulkenberg finished seventh in Australia, which there are other things that happened in Australia, like the red flags at the end of the race that made the ending such a cluster mess that nobody cares about where where Nico Hulkenberg finished. Sorry. No, I mean, I think an interesting angle could be Hulk and Mags and like how hard it is to go season after season and not do anything at all and how frustrating it is to qualify well and then not do well and struggling with the car but no one wants to see that like that's not exciting to see so I don't think Haas will really be highlighted besides you know like you said Gunther giving his opinion on other things because Gunther is a huge part of it and maybe the the whole fire (laughs) yeah if we get that but it did happen much uh much later after the season like you said so Yeah, it's weird. It happened the first week of January, which feels like eight months ago. Um, Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah. It was not that long ago that it happened. Like, I think the end of it, it was longer between the end of the season and and, and that it is to to now. Um, That, yeah, it, like, obviously from the stories that we've heard, this happened, you know, between Christmas and New Year's, but it obviously didn't come out until like the, you know, after after the holidays uh but i just i, I don't have no concept of time and we've i've also struggled that. with this on the podcast <laughs> emily can't yeah. do time yeah so i just i i my worry is that there's just not enough there like literally not enough time to get people together no. to get people in front of a camera to, to talk about this like obviously we had like the darth toto um you know end bit of drive to survive after the 2021 season um that could have been filmed at any time or they just you know had him change his shirt so we really never know you know when these things are filmed um unless you really care to do that research and you find out which more power to you um but yeah, I just don't know if it, it's there's going to be time to to sneak that in when you know it, last season they didn't they barely had enough time to to cover Sebastian Vettel's retirement, which was definitely something that Drive to Survive should have included more of. Yeah, no, completely agree. But yeah, so that's it for Haas. Bye. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and I would argue that this is an even shorter conversation. Um, mm-hmm. Alfa Romeo. Also they was an F1 team and existed and participated. And Valtteri Bottas got naked for a calendar because he loves being naked. And Joe Guan Yu had some top tier fashions. Yeah, that's and... all I really have to add. I will say Joe Guan Yu knocked it out of the park with his fashion this year. Oh, I, yeah. That's 
you know, again, not something we talk about a lot on the podcast, but the kid dresses really well. Don't know who his stylist is, but they kill it. I would love to see him talk about it on Drive to Survive because I don't know what else he's going to talk about. It would be interesting also maybe, mm, again, crazy angle, throwing this out there, um, to see him talk about Silverstone this year after Silverstone the previous year. Um, But other than that, I don't think he has much to add to Drive to Survive this year. Or or Botas. Like me I feel like they were very irrelevant this year. Oh no, I mean incredibly, unless you're gonna talk about the the irrelevance, but there are so many other things to talk about, like everything that happened at Alphatari, which Like they could, could they could just do a Drive to Survive Alphatari spinoff, and I think we yeah. need twenty episodes. Like they it, yeah. there's not enough episodes to talk about Alphatari. Yeah. Um the Nick DeVries of it all. Just everything. Oh, um, just just a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, all he, of it. he came on very strong at the end of last season with like, you know, I'm going to be the number one driver and I that want Yuki's happen. reaction. I want to see a Yuki Sonoda reaction to Nick DeVries saying he's the number one driver after he was let go. I want little Yuki yeah. to be like, who's the number one driver now, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to see. Yeah. I don't know if I'll get it, but that's what I want. Yeah. Um, we're, we're definitely going to get a lot of Daniel Ricardo's return, which I'm really ex- like Daniel Ricardo is one of the other stars of drive to survive. So it's great. Like we, I know that, you know, a lot of people talked to, you know, after he was leaving McLaren, like what's going to happen with drive to survive. He's like the guy from the drivers. And then now it's like, Oh, well there's no problem there. He's back. Yeah. I think, like, honestly, just knowing the format and how they, like, theme things and wrap up episodes, we'll probably get a whole Daniel Ricardo episode, which oh, I'm yeah. fine with. He's super entertaining. But honestly, like, I don't need to see the f- a, a full story. Like, I want to know how it happened. I want more details behind, like, the testing, him getting the seat. Also, I want I personally also want more information on how they decided to make him the reserve driver or like the third Mm -hmm. driver, whatever his title was, whatever reserve number three driver. I want to know that. And then I want to know like how that was going, the pressure with Checo, which we'll talk more about when we get to Red Bull. And I want to know like how I want to get his reaction from Mexico, but like I could care less about his rehab, his hand, all that. Like I want more of the end of last season or end of 2022 going into 2023 becoming driver number three for Red Bull and then actually making the move to AlphaTauri and then Mexico. Like, I don't need the whole rehab, the broken hand, how he was feeling. Like, I could care less. Yeah, and I mean, it, there there really wasn't a lot that we were missing of Daniel when you were watching that, when you were living through that portion of weeks that he had the broken hand. It was just like, Daniel had surgery. Daniel is not driving this week. Um, but there, and there was a lot more of the Liam Lawson of it all. And that is something that I um, am really curious to see how they portray that and how I, I feel like if there's going to be a moment of drive to survive, that's over dramatized, I feel like it's going to be the least Liam Lawson of it all. Um, I just, you know, I feel like they're going to try to play up this idea of like, is Daniel going to come back at all this season? Are they just going to keep Liam? Um, you know, what's going to happen to that second Alpha Tauri seat? round two um so i i i really you know i want to see how they're going to portray that obviously lawson is a strong contender for an rb seat for 2025 um and i'm really curious to see how that is portrayed in you know from from the 2023 you know season perspective but also i feel like we might also get the true facts of it was never, will he come back? No, it's Liam. Will he come back? No, it's Liam. I wanted, I feel like it might have, it might be more cut and dry than that, but I don't I know. I think it it'll be. Yeah. I, I mean, it is Netflix. It's a show. There might be drama, but we also might get the true actual timeline of everything too. I don't know, but I'm just, I'm yeah. really excited to see how Yuki reacts to Nick coming to the team also 
how Nick reacts to being fired and yeah. and that whole piece of it. I want to know, though, like, I know they film throughout the season, but I want to know, like, if we actually get real unfiltered Nick DeVries or if he's just kind of like this character floating, like, and we get cuts and bits. But I want to know, like, if we get true good interviews with him. Because I feel like he's like, oh, I'm number one driver. Like, of course, I'm going to subscribe to, you know, drive to survive. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be I think he's like the really second person I hate the most in Formula <laughs> One behind Checo. But I don't know. Uh, I think you hate George a little more. Well, George is still on the grid. If Nick was on the grid, yeah. I think he'd be a little, he'd be above George. So, yeah. and I also just, you know, I, I, I just want some like quality entertaining Yuki content. Like, oh, Yuki, Absolutely. you have a new teammate this week. Um, and then Yuki's just like in the corner cursing and not wanting to work out because he just wants to eat and drive. I want, I want Yuki versus engineers real bad. Real bad. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's definitely going to be a lot of of Alpha Towery in it, and it's 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 going to be the the core of the season. And so, I, I'm just, I'm just really excited to see how it, it all shakes out. But definitely, yeah. the whole I'm excited to see how they frame it. Bit. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be really to see interesting to see. It. Yeah. Moving on to the next team, Williams. Yes, I feel like. They didn't have a lot going on, but at the same time, they had a lot going on. Like, they had an American rookie, which obviously is going to be highlighted because they have to highlight it. It's almost an obligation, which is fine. I think it'd be good to highlight. I feel like Logan Sargent, we don't know a ton about him. He's kind of a little irrelevant, if you ask me. He crashed a lot. I feel like I want to get, like, the will he, won't he be back piece, but above all... I just want a full episode on my man, James Bowles. Yeah. All I want is I want, because it was, you know, he's a new um, team principal. I feel like we could get that angle. I think that would be great. I'd also like him to just personally narrate an Alex Albon highlight reel because Alex did great. Um, I think they honestly could do a whole episode on Williams. Just because I feel like they they did make strides this season. They did finish towards the back of the, you know, grid. Yeah. But I but feel like been they better. still made strides. Yes, they did do better. I mean, Alex was, you know, qualifying really well in a Williams. Um, I think this next season, I really, I've said it before, I think 2024 is going to be a really good season for them. Um, but I don't know. I'm excited to see if Williams is highlighted or how they're highlighted. I, I definitely think they're, they're going to be highlighted. I think that, you know, they've made enough of improvements from, you know, season over season. Um, and then, you know, with the, you know, very limited silly season that we had, the the real question for so long was, when are we going to know that Logan Sargent did enough to keep his seat for 2024? And obviously the real answer was after season ended, but it it's really, you know, that's definitely a like, oh, a dramatic thing that we can feature. Plus he's American. There were three American races, including a really big American race that was a kind of a big deal or, or something for some reason. I don't, I don't know. We'll talk about it later. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think we'll see plenty of Williams, and then Alex Albon just has so much potential as you know a future driver for a really you know good top tier team. Um, that yeah. you know whether whether the producers knew it or not at the time um, that the twenty twenty four merry go round was going to be so crazy. Um, that, you know they're they're gonna you know definitely preview the fact that he's you know going to be moving on to bigger and better at some point. We just don't know where yet. I know. Oh, 2024 silly season. They like yeah. can't even do a silly season episode in 20 for this last season because there like wasn't there a silly none. season. So no, um, they're saving okay. it for, for 2024. I know they, they're giving us all a break from anxiety and it's all this year. Yeah. Um, pretty much. So this brings us to an interesting team. And I say, inter- when I say interesting, I mean incredibly <laughs> irrelevant and forgotten most of the time by both of us. So we've said most on almost every episode, not every, but a lot, how we forget about Pierre Gasly all the time. We also yeah. forgot about Alpine. And 
that something actually happened at Alpine. Yeah. Um, Otmar got fired, so we will be seeing that. Or maybe not. Maybe next Netflix will forget that Alpine exists as well. Um, maybe. But I want to get Otmar's thoughts and feels on how Oscar Piastri did at McLaren this year. Yeah. <laughs> For the love of God, give it to us, Netflix. I don't think we will get the unfiltered thoughts and feels from Otmar on Oscar Piastri, um, but I'd love to see but it. But we want it. I want it. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Who knows? Because because really, you know, Alpine just had, like, they had such a terrible year. And, it, like, they, there was there was a lot of excitement going into it because it was, the, you know, the, the French team with the all-French lineup. You know, Pierre Gasly was finally moving away from the Red Bull Junior team to, you know, a, 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 an actual team team for the first time in his career. And I feel like Pierre Gasly, of all the drivers, is probably going to be the most forgotten of outside of like the Haas drivers and the Alfa Romeo drivers. Like, I really think that we're not like he had a podium this year and I think we're going to see none of it, um, Honestly, but we will see the Monaco podium. podium. I forgot. I did too. I forgot about yeah. Sandboard. Um, we'll no, see I the mean, Monaco podium. I, well, I you yeah, know, we'll, we'll see Monaco. SD besties, but yeah. Yeah. But I think we'll only see it because it's Monaco. Like if he podiums yes. at Hungary, we wouldn't see it. No. And it's like, I have this on, on our, on our list of um, Esteban Ocon almost running down FIA personnel in the pit lane in Baku <laughs> on a last lap pit stop, um, which I personally feel is like one of the funniest moments that I know we're not going to see on drive to survive um, because it makes the FIA look really stupid, never forget. but never also forget. never forget that he almost killed a bunch of FIA there, there was a question of whether it was photographers or FIA personnel. And I, fo I follow on social media one of the Formula One photographers who said, no, it was all FIA personnel who were just walking around the pit lane because they forgot <sighs> that he had a mandatory pit stop that he still needed to meet at the end of that race. I would also like to hear his thoughts and feels on getting 500 penalties. <laughs> That's what I would the also like to hear. The most penalized driver of all time be behind Pastor Maldonado, who oh is the most penalized driver of all time. Um, oh. Yeah, it's, they're, they're just, they're, the only reason why they're going to have relevance this year is because they have a shit ton of famous investors everywhere. Well, all that, the famous investors. That, and I also feel like they could have the angle of Oscar and Otmar at the beginning of the season but at the same yeah. time like Oscar didn't start getting good and McLaren didn't start getting good until after Otmar left so I feel like even mm -hmm. that's not an angle for them so they'll probably talk about the famous investors but beyond that like there's nothing going on for Alpine yeah no Alpine was they they just they didn't have a great car and you know reliability yeah. especially was just so bad this year hopefully it improves i mean they took each other out drivers. a few races but beyond yeah, that I, like i we don't well i think them. both of these drivers are trying are going to be driving this year in 2024 to prove that they deserve lewis hamilton's open mercedes seat honestly i think everyone's driving for that seat this year like 2024 is the race for the race to mercedes second seat that is what this yeah. season is so yeah, pretty much uh Okay, next we move to Aston Martin. There will be which, plenty of Aston Martin coverage. Plenty of Aston Martin. All I want to see, I want to hear unfiltered Lance Stroll on just anything. I just want to hear yeah. from Lance Stroll and like where he's at, what he's feeling about continuing in the sport. Um, I want to know about the bike accident preseason. Yep. And just like in general, what what what's new with the kid? Um, also, I just want Fernando Alonso to be a main feature because he had a great season. He had his hundredth podium, and then he didn't. He lost his hundredth podium. <laughs> and also, he's just super entertaining. Has a great personality. Super fun to watch. Um, I became a big fan of his watching Drive to Survive. Yeah. And so I, you know, really want to see that i want to see daddy stroll and his just like 
sourpuss face upset at the world constantly like we're not good enough um I yeah I don't know I just I want to I want it all I just I need an update from Aston Martin so yeah I I really you know Fernando really cemented himself as like so happy to be the villain which is which is great like that was such a fun you know arc on his time on drive to survive you know when he was at alpine and he hated everything um so i'm i'm really excited to like just see this like happy go lucky excited loves everything fernando and just like all of the perspectives of what his life you know you know what his, his driver career life is like having moved to Aston Martin this year and, you know, becoming um, Lawrence Stroll's third child. That's at least a, a, how many, I don't even know how many children. I know there's has, Chloe and I know there's next. Lance, but I don't yeah, know if there's I, like others. So, yeah. So, so, so becoming Lawrence Stroll's, you know, probable third child um, and just like what, what life is like there and, you know, all the behind the scenes and, and Aston Martin has been doing so much, you know, investment and building up. They, they just, um, they, they finished before last season or early into to last season, this brand new facility at Silverstone. Um, so, you know, they'll probably, you know, do a whole big fancy marketing piece ask segment in drive to survive that I think we'll see. Yeah, I know. I want to know like what he's eating for breakfast. That's made him into like this cheery old man because, he, the villain no more but yeah no. I don't know it'll be interesting to see yeah and then what another team that's going to dominate drive to survive is going to be McLaren because we started from the literal bottom with Lando Norris having six pit stops at Bahrain what do you mean that's not good <laughs> I think that's bad no, I think they'll do a whole, like, again, the way that they frame it, I think they'll do a whole episode on McLaren and the turnaround, yeah. um, you know, from <laughs> six pit stops to actually making podium. Um, yeah. I think that, I think McLaren will get its own episode. I really do. I would like yeah. an Oscar Piastri highlight reel. He had an incredible <laughs> um, rookie season. So I would really like to see – a lot on Oscar Piastri. I would also like to just see Zach Brown make a fool of himself with anything he says. Just anything. I want to hear Honestly, his thoughts on Daniel coming back. Oh my God, Catherine. Yes. Yeah. I, I oh. want to know his thoughts. Like, I want a side by side of Zach Brown versus Christian Horner and how, like, how, you know how they had to like re-educate Daniel and like break him out of those bad driving habits that, that Christian and that Red Bull people have implied were some of the issues that that Daniel had when he was at McLaren. Um, I I don't know how if if I've talked about this much on the podcast, but I I, I personally feel that like. Daniel Ricardo and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad career decisions really started when he decided to leave Red Bull. Um, he had some legitimate reasons and didn't have a terrible time at Renault. Renault was just going through a rebrand, um, which is one of the reasons why he he left to go to McLaren. But, you know, he should have stayed at Red Bull. Yeah. Hot take. Yeah. I mean, I think, and I've heard this on another podcast or in an interview that I don't remember what was said, but, or who it was with, but there were some people in his ear and that's why he left and whatever. whatever. Oh, definitely. But, um, and I think that's why he left both times anyways. Um, yeah. But no, I really, I want to just hear Zach, how he feels about having to pay Daniel $18 million yeah. while he's driving for another team. <laughs> yeah. It's one thing to pay a guy $18 million to, to, you know, sit in a simulator for a season, but then Nick DeVries had to go and get fired. How's it feel to have uh, your second highest paid driver driving for a different team? <laughs> driving for Alpha Tauri. Oh uh, yeah, so I want some um some good Zach Brown quotes. I don't know. He's just like yeah. he makes himself just seem and come across so douchey sometimes. I love to like hear how the whole Vegas betting like race and fight thing came about. I don't know if we'll actually yeah. get that, but it'd be interesting to hear from him about that. So 
I don't yeah. know. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Now, moving on to Emily's <sighs> team. God. Again, you could have a whole season on the good, the bad, and the Ferrari. Um <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I This is the thing. I hope they do Carlos Sainz justice and give him Agreed. an episode he deserves for Singapore. He is the only driver who wasn't on Red Bull to win. That should mean something. Yeah. I want to see the, like, Lando DRS thing and get, you know, the real thoughts and feels and the dramatization from him and Lando on that. Um, yeah. I also think, obviously, we're going to get a whole Vegas episode. Carlos mm-hmm. is going to be highlighted because of what happened. Um, I could really go without hearing anything about Charles Leclerc. I don't know. He's yeah. just starting to rub me the wrong way. I think because of all of the contract stuff that's coming out. Um, and obviously, he's staying at Ferrari and Carlos is leaving. I don't know. But yeah, I hope Carlos gets an episode or they at least put him in good light, but who knows? They'll probably cover the Monaco curse again. Yep. Um, I'd love for them to cover the <laughs> Charles Pole Max Win curse cuz how many times did that happen this season? Um, so many. Again, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think Ferrari will be interesting. I think they'll cover like the strategy errors and the struggles within the team a little bit. We aren't going to yeah. get any of the Hamilton stuff, obviously, because that happened like a week ago. So we won't get that. That'll definitely yeah. come next season. Um, if we're not getting Gunther, we're not getting Lewis Hamilton move. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that, that you know, this isn't going to be like for, – for a team that finished third in the championship – we're not really going to get a lot of like triumphant Ferrari content no. out there, obviously. Because it was a horrible Charles, season. Yeah. There like was Charles no had triumph. A, he, the, Charles had a great time in Vegas. Car, you know, Carlos won Singapore and like literally owns Singapore. Um, but it's, yeah, they, they just, it's, it's, re- I think it's really going to highlight the issue, or they should highlight the issues that they have with their strategy. And then, like, I don't know if we're going to see a lot, uh, you know, as much Fred Vasseur as we saw, like, Mattia Bonato. Um, no. Love Fred, but I just don't think that he's the type to be, like, that front and center type team principal, like a Toto Wolf or a Christian Horner or a James Vows or a Gunther Steiner, RIP. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think if we wanted to like frame a whole episode, I think what would be really cool or maybe would be like a different take is to step away from the drivers and do an episode at Monza of like framing the Tifosi and like seeing Carlos on pole and, you know, Charles Leclerc and how crazy the crowd was and everyone was so excited and how much it means. And cause Ferrari's like really run by, you know, mm-hmm. the country. Let I mean, it's not, but it is. Yeah. Um, and so I think an episode would be interesting to show like how passionate the whole country is about Ferrari, but that would be like the only way to like have a positive <laughs> episode. And I don't even know, even know if it would be a positive episode. It'd be no, especially because that was a race where they were fighting. Um, I know they they had to fight for that last podium spot. Um, but that also reminds me of um, they're going to cover Emilia Romagna because that was canceled due to right. storms. They'll probably um, so cover that. We'll, we'll get like two whole minutes on on that. And, you know, um, Nick DeVries got stranded somewhere. And then I think Yuki was helping with the cleanup because um, he was there. Alphatari is local to, to yeah. that area. Um, so the, it, it just occurred to me that that's, you know, also something that we're probably going to see. Uh, but yeah, there, there's really not a lot of, a lot of happy, happy Ferrari, Ferrari things. Besides, honestly, besides Singapore. But I don't even know yeah. if they'll show Singapore. You know what they'll they show? Should. They should show, show. They have to show Singapore because it's the only non-Red Bull win. But they're also going to show the Ferrari Mercedes battle for P2 in the Constructors Championship. Which, yeah. unfortunately for Ferrari, didn't go Ferrari's way. Um, but that is definitely going to be a story. Yeah. Which leads us to Mercedes, <laughs> who ended up in P2. Yep. Um, all I want is Toto and Christian fighting. Yep. That's all I care to see out of Mercedes. I also would like to see maybe some context on Lewis's decision. I think Lewis does a really good job. And, like, I think he 
he understands what drive to survive does for the sport yes. and he's very intentional so i think he's not one to shy away from the interview chair and not give a hundred percent truth and full honesty so i think we i'm hoping he stays to that and we get context on his decision and his frustrations he's always been honest about being frustrated whenever he is frustrated so I, right. I think maybe this will kind of give us more of a full picture on him leaving Mercedes. I We've talked about this on our on a previous episode where, you know, Ferrari said, here's all the money, here's everything you want, come to Ferrari. And I know he said he's wanted to drive for Ferrari. Everyone wants to drive for Ferrari, whatever. But I think this will just give us more context around why he didn't fulfill the full two-year contract at Mercedes, why he's leaving a year early, things like that. So I want to see context. Um I want to see Toto and Christian fighting. I want to see the side pods. Um, but other than that, I don't really need to see anything else from Mercedes. You know, you know, as you were saying that, what reminded me is that Lewis signed a contract with Mercedes this past season. Like we forget that he signed, yeah. he and George signed the you know same two year extensions. So I'm I'm really curious, especially in light of what we know now. Um, and Drive to Survive isn't going to like re edit any of this because there's no time. But knowing what we know now, I wonder how much they're going to cover of his decision to you know, resign Sign that Mercedes contract. for two years. And cause I, I said in our, um, our silly season recap back in August that, you know, that we were going through the debacle of the emotionally signed contract, which they'll definitely, you know, at least throw in that phrase uh, somewhere just cause it's so stupid. Um, but I, I remember saying that, it's emotional because it's probably going to be Lewis's last, last Mercedes contract, which spoiler alert to myself, it was. Yeah. Um, but I also said that maybe it could mean that it's his last um, contract before he retires. Um, so I'm really curious to see if they're going to talk about any of, of that, you know, you know, mental space mentality, you know, of continuing with Mercedes, especially in light of what we know now. And then on the George side of things, you know, George obviously had a really, really tough time this, this past season, you know, obviously the Singapore crash was one of the worst moments. Um, I do hope that they, they sneak in that radio call from Barcelona where, where George asked if it was raining, but it turned out he was just really sweaty. Um, and then I wonder how much, if any, they're going to include of the Susie and Toto Wolf FIA drama, because that happened really, you know, really early on in the, the winter break. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we have, you know, to, to kind of combat the Christian Horner, Jerry, Jerry Howell Horner bits, they had more of Susie last season. And then in, you know, with the F1 Academy, I would expect to see more of Susie in it as well. Um, so I, I think that, you know, we, that, that's also something that I'm curious to see how, how they cover if they do. Yeah. I, you know, I love Susie. I would love to see her featured as much as possible. I'd also love to see them do her justice and show F1 Academy pieces and see her in action and do and spotlight that. Yeah. Whether they actually will or not is another thing, but I'd love to see that. And like, I don't necessarily want them to highlight the FIA drama with her and Toto just because like it was a mute point it was absolutely nothing and it never should have happened so I and don't it makes want the like, FIA look bad right and it's like I don't want to give airtime to something that was not true and like oh, yeah. put her in a bad light but I hope that they highlight her and all that she does for the F1 Academy yeah. And I think that, you know, it's, it's easy for, for, you know, there to be content of that because, um, George was one of the trophy presenters at, yeah. um, one of the, uh, F1 Academy races at Cota, which was the one that was broadcast internationally to end last season for, for the Academy. And so Susie was there. Netflix was definitely at Cota. So they, you know, it, it's very easy to think that that would be something that they could include. Yeah, definitely. And we just love Susie. Oh, we love her. She's so cool. And she's married to yep. Toto, which is awesome. Um, okay. Last but not least, we have Catherine's favorite. My team. Red Bull. Yep. If I don't get coverage of the double DNF, 
I will never watch Drive and Survive again. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, I need I need some context. I need some color. I need some thoughts and feels on the double DNF. Yeah, like we know why they, they sent him out again in Suzuka because they didn't want him to have a grid penalty the following race. But still, like we haven't, you know, a double DNF isn't something that you see very often in Formula One and especially not in modern Formula One. So like, and and it, it also, it plays into like the dr- the drama of Checo who had a really like really tough stretch of, of the season. So it, it's kind of like one of those moments that it, like it makes it look really bad, but you have to include that just as you have to include an entire episode of Max and GP um, just being an old married couple. I know. I hope we get some GP content. I really yeah. do. But no, I, I actually think Red Bull is an interesting one because, again, you could do a whole season on Red Bull, right? Like they're world champions. Max is world champion. Honestly, I don't care. I don't need to see that. I want to know, like, I... I can't believe I'm saying this. I want an episode on Checo. Like, I want to know what was going on with him all season. Because from his Instagram, he doesn't know what was going on because he wasn't making any decision and he has no say and he has no thoughts because everyone was making those thoughts for him. Like, I want him to have an original thought. I want him to say something. To add context, you mean that that somebody from Red Bull PR handles his Instagram account and he he doesn't post himself. Yes, thank you for the context. Like, I want him to have an original thought and speak words that he has come up with himself. I don't want him reading from a teleprompter. I don't want him reading a script. Like, I want him to have an original thought and actually say, like, how he's feeling, what he's thinking, like, what was going on. And I think that's where my frustration lies with Checo is that when bad things happen, His response is like, oh, well, the team did good. And yes, next weekend we will do better. It's like, be mad, be frustrated, like show emotion, be a human, don't be a robot. Like every other driver, when something goes bad, they show frustration, they get mad, they kick shit, they throw shit. Like, come on, Checo. Just, I don't know. I think that's what, why he bothers me so much is because like, he seems just like, I don't know, like he doesn't care. It's not like he doesn't care, but he just seems like he's letting everybody speak for him and think for him and feel for him. And it's like, show us the emotion. Come on. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they do. Like, you know, it, it, I'm really curious, you know, Christian has said a lot about Checo's mental state throughout the season and the pressure that he's been under. I agree with you. I want to hear what Checo thinks about. Oh, I want to know what Checo thinks about the pressure, Checo. The pressure that he he has been under, and you know maybe a thought about Helmut Marco's racism oopsie, oh my God. and just like you know, you know how how it must be you to mean, be driving like, alongside the... a three time champion. Yeah, and like you mean like besides the team ordered like oh yes he's a great guy and I know he didn't mean it. It's like no, mm-hmm. but like I know that's not how you feel. I don't care if that's what, you know, Red Bull PR is telling you to say. Like, I don't know. And I think that's what bothers me the most. Maybe, maybe that is how he feels and he and he doesn't have another thought about it, which is fine, which is great. But I don't know. It's always just so, like, monotone and feels like it's not real or truthful. And that's why it bothers me. I don't know. But, yeah, I want to hear what Checo feels about Checo things. <laughs> I would also, but to take a step back, I also want to hear more on Christian's perspective from like the Daniel, Ricardo, Checo, potential seat takeover, battle, battle, whatever we're calling it. I want to know if there were actually threats of, you know, Checo losing his seat or not. It'll probably be lies anyways, but I just, I want to see that drama. I don't think they would ever admit to that anyway. Um, Yeah, But Netflix can dramatize it and make me feel better about myself. Okay, Catherine? (laughs) And I'm sure they will. Um, Yeah, I'm I'm really curious because like, obviously you have on one side, Max wins everything. Max breaks every record. Max doing Max things, all maxing time. And then on the other side. We see that because we already saw it. Exactly. I mean, obviously we'll see, you know, Qatar when he wins, especially because he won on a Saturday and Oscar Piastri standing there having won his first ever sprint race and Max is just one from second to the world title. Um, Poor Oscar. And I, I do think that they're going to spend a little bit of time on in Qatar because Qatar was such a, 
a big disaster of a race weekend. Um, Because, yeah. yes, you had Max winning, but you also had, you know, Oscar Piastri found out that he got demoted from sprint qualifying during the interview um, because his teammate, who was also interviewed, lost out and everyone was confused. You had drivers who <laughs> legitimately almost died because the race conditions were so bad. You know, Logan Sargent had to DNF due to, you know, basically throwing up in the car. Alex Albon needed to be lifted out of the car after the race. Lance Stroll went from car to med center. Fernando Alonso had burns on his back. And not even to to speak about the whole issue with the tires from Pirelli who screwed up. So I think that that Qatar is going to be a big... Qatar is going to get its own episode. Moral of and, the story. But it, and, and the fact that they can't avoid it because Max won the world title there. Yeah. Which I think is yeah. really funny. It's like, oh, we're stuck dealing with the stupid race. Obviously, they're going to, sh- you know, show, you know, the opening in Bahrain. They'll show Abu Dhabi because they always have to, you know, showcase Abu Dhabi. Um, you know, Vegas. Vegas oh, is going to be a whole Vegas, episode. Yeah, Vegas will get a whole episode. I just hope they don't, like sugarcoat it like what like I want to know everyone else's reaction and how they feel about what happened to Carlos because what happened to Carlos in Vegas is bullshit and like everyone knows it and I want to hear drivers reactions like unfiltered not to the media like I want to hear it in the Netflix interview booth of what happened yeah because like Having done done the research on on you know the rules and and why you know why they couldn't you know make the rule you know make an exception or things like that because you know of the the doors that it opens for other things I can understand why Carlos had to have of that course. penalty yeah but it just it doesn't look good no especially it's not a good with look. all the drama coming into Vegas the problem that I think with any Vegas I I don't think that they're gonna have any like genuine Vegas coverage because it's owned by Formula One and Formula One is working with Netflix on Drive to Survive so of course they're going to make Vegas look pretty and shiny and wonderful and beautiful and yes there was a fantastic race but yes god the no. lead up was a nightmare yes and no though because I mean, I understand they have to paint them in a good light, but at the same time, they can't smoke and mirrors the shit out of this. Like, they have to show... I think that they could very easily ignore the fact that they kicked out fans for FP2, which I stayed up all night to watch for the record. (laughs) Okay. Yes, they they could glaze over that piece, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I... Okay. Touche. Yes. But... Netflix does have, well, I don't want to say they have a duty, but mm. they almost at some point kind of, like, they can't fake everything. You know what no. I mean? Like, it, it it did not go well. Like, yeah, the race was entertaining. It was a great race, but shit happened. And I think they have to show as much of it, you know, truthfully as they can, maybe skipping FP2, but maybe they don't. Mm. Maybe they they glaze over it and they show 75% of how bad it was instead of a hundred. You know what I mean? But I don't think that they're going to mm-hmm. like purposefully not show things just because like, Oh, the FIO or F1 will be mad or whoever owns it. You know, I struggle with acronyms too. F-O-N. Timing, timing and acronyms are not my thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically the moral of the story is I'm really curious to see how they showcase Vegas and how it is, it is portrayed. Cause l- like we said, Great race. Everything else was a mess. Um, it, it, so I'm really curious to see how they distill that into the, an episode of Drive to Survive. Yeah. But no, I think outside of the teams and how they choose to highlight them or crisscross them or group episodes in together, I think um, Qatar and Vegas potentially could have their own episodes. I also mm-hmm. think maybe they could do a rookie episode. Because I think, yes, like, we haven't had three rookies in a few years. They, I mean, we had Logan, Nick DeVries, which he doesn't consider himself a rookie, but he was a rookie, um, yeah. and Oscar, Oscar Piastri. And I think it would be interesting to get a whole rookie episode, um, but I don't know if we'll get one. 
I think you can very easily get that or at least get a lot of coverage of the, of the three rookies and why not put that in a, in a whole episode. And I think it also helps that you have, you know, not only did Oscar Piastri break silly season in 2022, but his manager, Mark Webber, is a Formula for, former Formula One driver. So it's very easy to make that into a full big story. Plus, we, you know, there, there was a lot of him, you know, a lot of Oscar, a lot of Mark throughout the season. So it's definitely something that you can easily chronicle and turn into a story that, you know, would work for an episode of Drive to Survive. Yeah, no, definitely. But no, I'm very excited to see how it all shakes out and see what episodes come out and and everything. And like, obviously, this is not a catch all of the entire season. There's going to be stuff in here that doesn't get highlighted. And there's going to be stuff that we miss just because it didn't make our list doesn't mean it, you know, isn't entertaining. These are just things that stood out to us. But yeah, of everything we talked about and Catherine, maybe it's stuff that we didn't even touch. What is like the one thing you really, really hope you get more context on you hope is highlighted that you really want to see on the show this season? I mean, we, we've talked about it definitely, but, or no, we, we talked about this offline. I'm really curious just to see like who anchors the, the show. And, you know, obviously it's usually Gunther and, you know, how much of, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of Gunther giving Gunther opinions to um, all of these things that are happening on the grid. Um, and I'm, I'm really, I, I'm really curious to see his perspectives of you know what happened the season like his perspective on you know Checo on Daniel on you know McLaren starting off being terrible on Ferrari making stupid strategy decisions like I'm 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 I want to I want to see a little bit of that I think yeah what about I I I appreciate Gunther's opinion and like his point of view and I think he gives a a very Gunther take on things let's say so I think I think that's a really interesting thing um so again this is like I said at the very top of the episode Emily's wish list of things I don't think this is going to be highlighted and I don't think we'll get an episode but I would really 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 I said this earlier I really want to see Susie Wolf be highlighted for all the work that she does with um F1 Academy and it's not because I'm a woman and she's a woman and girl power I just think it's so fascinating like how one person can be doing so much for a sport and Mm -hmm. like I I personally don't think she gets enough credit um for what she's doing and I think it deserves to be highlighted it has nothing not nothing but it doesn't have a ton to do with drive to or with the f1 season drive to survive probably won't pick it up but I think just seeing her and highlighting the work that she does would be really cool to see and also I think it would be really cool to have like more of a window into the F1 Academy and the ties between the teams and the F1 Academy um going into next year or this year correct yeah crossing my years but I I would really like (laughs) time I'd really like to see that so yeah I agree and we've we've talked about this before in regards to like F1 Academy which we'll we'll do a preview once we get you know closer to their season but hopefully with you know them making accessible more you know all of the the races that will open up a lot more doors to you know eyes on what is happening with that corner of the sport but considering they're they're going to be side by side I I I think that that gives you know way to to sneak in a little bit of f1 academy into the drive to survive coverage yeah and maybe we don't get it for the 2023 season we get it for the 2024 season but i just think it would be interesting to show a little bit of of that side of the sport yeah pretty much so cool well up next we have our livery recap our thoughts feels unfiltered probably unwanted opinions um we have a lot of them I'm very excited to see the rest of them I have a lot of thoughts and feels on them already Catherine I know you you have more than I do as well um so the rest of liveries are coming out this week so we will have our livery episode out next week very very excited to talk liveries very excited to just start a full season of going off track because last season we only had a half one so it's very excited to start at the very beginning but that has been our drive to survive wish list episode thanks for going off track with us guys